Hi everyone. Today I'm going to be talking about a new method of solving quadratic equations, which was announced recently by a maths professor at Carnegie Mellon University called Po Shen Lo. Now, you might not agree that this is exactly a new method. It's more like a new way of looking at the old way of solving quadratic equations, because really, well, there's nothing new to be discovered as far as quadratics go. Anyway, it's very interesting and I want to describe it to you. So let's go. Let's discover the maths. The quadratic equation is one that has the form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b and c are real numbers. The simplest case is when a is 1 and b and c are both 0, leaving us with just y equals x squared. When plotted out as a graph, a quadratic equation produces a curve known as a parabola, with the turning point at the bottom if a is positive and at the top if a is negative. To solve an equation means looking for values of x that make y 0. These correspond to the points where the curve meets or crosses the x-axis. There are three possibilities. The curve may never meet the x-axis, in which case there are no real solutions. It may just touch the x-axis, in which case there's a single real solution, or if you want to think of it that way, as two real solutions that coincide. Or it may cross the x-axis in two places, in which case there are two distinct real solutions. We learn in school a couple of different ways of solving quadratics. The first is factorization, which only works if the equation is relatively simple and the solutions are whole numbers. For example, if the equation to be solved is y equals x squared minus x minus 6, we put x squared minus x minus 6 equal to 0 and then factorize the left hand side to give x minus 3 times x plus 2 equals 0 so that the solutions are x equals 3 or x equals minus 2. If the quadratic doesn't factorize easily we can use the general formula for solving quadratics x equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a and just plug in the values for a, b and c. You may wonder where this general formula comes from. It comes from the process known as completing the square. Here's how. We start from ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0 and now we move the c to the other side. So we have ax squared plus bx equals minus c. Now we divide through by a, so we have 1 over a times ax squared plus bx equals minus c over a, and that simplifies down to x squared plus b over a x equals minus c over a. Then we take the coefficient of x, which is the b over a, divide it by 2 and square it. So we have b over a all over 2 squared equals b squared over 4a squared. And now we add this to both sides of the equation to complete the square. So what we get is x squared plus b over a x plus, and I've left it actually as b over 2a all squared, equals minus c over a plus b squared over 4a squared. Now let's simplify the right hand side. So we have x squared plus b over a x plus b over 2a all squared equals minus 4ac over 4a squared plus b squared over 4a squared. And the right hand side now simplifies further, putting it all over the common denominator. b squared minus 4ac all over 4a squared. Now let's factorize the left hand side, which we've made a squared expression to give x plus b over 2a all squared equals b squared minus 4ac all over 4a squared. Take the square root of both sides and we have x plus b over 2a equals plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Finally moving that b over 2a to the right hand side 
we have x equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And there's our general formula for solving a quadratic. Now let's look at Dr. Lowe's new method. We'll start with a quadratic in the form x squared plus bx plus c equals 0. If the coefficient of x squared is a number a other than 1, we can simply divide through by this to start with. Now, suppose this factorizes as follows, x minus m times x minus n equals 0, so that m and n are the solutions that we're looking for. Multiplying out, we get x squared minus m plus n x plus m n equals 0. So we're looking for values of m and n that multiply to give c and that add to give minus b. Well, there's nothing new so far. Dr. Lowe's insight was to realize that we don't need to guess what m and n are and go through a process of trial and error. Starting from m plus n equals minus b, it's clear that the average of m and n, in other words, m plus n over 2, equals minus b over 2. Let's say the difference between m and b minus 2, which is the average, is z. In other words, m and n equals minus b over 2 plus or minus z. Knowing their product is c, we can write minus b over 2 plus z times minus b over 2 minus z equals c. So that b squared over 4 minus z squared equals c. So z squared equals b squared over 4 minus c. Therefore, z equals plus or minus the square root of b squared over 4 minus c. So the solutions are mn equals minus b over 2 plus or minus the square root of b squared over 4 minus c. The big advantage of Lowe's method is that you don't have to remember this formula or the more familiar one, minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Instead, all you need to remember is the method or the algorithm. And this is in three steps. One, the solutions must add to give minus b, so their average is minus b over 2, and they can be written as minus b over 2 plus or minus z. Two, write down the product, minus b over 2 plus z, times minus b over 2 minus z equals b squared over 4 minus z squared, which equals c, and solve this for z. 3. The solutions are minus b over 2 plus z and minus b over 2 minus z. Now, whether you think this is easier than trial factorization or using the well-known formula for finding a general solution is a matter of personal preference. Lowe's method isn't fundamentally new, because there aren't any new discoveries to be made about quadratic equations. It may be a useful way, though, to help students who haven't done much algebra before, and so perhaps it will find its way into classrooms. Most of us old-timers, I suspect, will carry on using trial and error factorization or the traditional general formula. Anyway, there you are. A new, or at least a new-looking way of solving quadratics. Thanks for watching. Keep in touch by subscribing and I'll see you again very soon to discover more maths.